All right, uh, the president wrapping up a meeting moments ago with the shooting victims of, of course, the Santa Fe High School massacre. Our next guest lost his brother in the Sandy Hook shooting, which sadly stands out as the worst school shooting uh, in American history. His brother, a Sandy Hook victim, J.T. Lewis, says that the school's safety should be a priority over simply gun control, but that everything has to be looked at, including those who perpetrate these crimes. Um, I, I spoke just a couple of weeks ago with uh, JT's mom. This is a, a family effort and a commitment, just he and his mom at this point. Very good to have you. Thanks for having me. Um, every time you hear about a shooting, and now, you know, what we're learning, you know, in the case of the Florida shooting and the release of videos where, you know, Nicholas Cruz was releasing videos up to the very day of his attack planning it, telegraphing it. What goes through your mind? Well, each shooting, uh, it ends up being almost a protocol that we have to follow. Uh, it's the same thing every time. The president is meeting with Santa Fe families. We met with President Obama at the time. Uh, it's un unfortunate. How old were really. you then? I, w I was 12 at the time. Yeah. It's unfortunate that you know we have to do this every time because there are things that we can do right now to stop these shootings, increasing school security. Another thing, I have to bring this up, the news puts these shooters' faces and names all over. We say it. We give them the credit they want. If you look at the video that uh, the shooter in Parkland just released the other day, he was crying out for fame. He was saying, I'm going to be all over the news. This is what I want. And so I really wish we'd make a concerted effort not to put their name and their face all over the news. But they will make news doing what they're doing, right? They will, it's yeah. It's tough. You're absolutely right. Yeah, it's, it's a fine line that we have to yeah. walk. I, I know, I understand the news does have to report on these things. They do have to, you know, they do have to keep us updated, but it is a fine line we have to walk. No, you're right, J.T. I'm not here to debate things all no, that no. you and, and your mom have been through. But um, it happens so darn often. Yeah. Why do you think it is? I, there's definitely a change an environment and I think because uh, you didn't see these things happening uh, 30 years ago it's something new guns have not changed you know that they, they're definitely more powerful but you know guns have been ar around forever school shootings are just starting to it seems build up momentum uh, so I think it's it's a, an attitude I definitely think uh, video games and movies and the news uh, glorifying these people and giving them airtime not glorifying but giving I know them airtime right um, it's it's a, a culture that we do have to change. Uh, a lot has been done about how does someone get to the point where they do what these mm -hmm. shooters do. And uh, we, we had a program, in fact, it's still around, this Promise program, where we seek out, try to help the kids who seem to be ostracized or alienated. Now, a lot is put on them to seek help and to get help. And in more shooters' cases than we can imagine, they don't. And some have looked at that well-intended program as the catalyst for a lot of this. What do you think? Yeah, it, what it looks like right now is the Promise program actually allowed the Parkland shooter to carry out his plans. Otherwise, he should have been put on a gun registry list, never been allowed access to guns. You know, stuff like this uh, in the Sandy Hook shooter's case and in the Parkland shooter's case, there were warning signs all the way for years. It wasn't just a snap one day that decided to go into a school and kill people. I mean, the Parkland shooter, the video is just released. It shows that he was planning it for months, was it? He, he had a plan. He wanted to kill 20 people, and he, you know, he built up to it, and he, he was, it was something he was planning. It wasn't a snap. So it's, it's something that can be prevented because they both had warning signs of Parkland shooter and the Sandy Hook shooter. In fact, we're told after that particular shooting, uh, people were even using his name, saying, oh, it had to be this guy, before they knew for sure it that's was. Right, that's now, right. In, in, my, in, in your case, go ahead. In my school, you know, and in every school, I've talked with kids around the country at this point, you know, you'll, you'll ask them and they can tell you, oh, yeah, I, I know who's going to be the next shooter. I know who would, who would shoot up our school. It's unfortunate. I mean, there's because there's things did we can do. Did you know the shooter in your school? I did not know the shooter. No, I was much younger, so I hadn't known him. But I'm sure the kids in the high school. Did knew. you go to the same school as your brother? I went to the elementary school, yeah. But I wasn't in that school at the time of the shooting. So looking back at that and what authorities knew, and then, of course, we found out the shoes, and I'll leave names out of it to, to your point. We did know a lot, how troubled he was, how, how much, um, you know, had, had fallen through the cracks. 
So there are a lot of privacy advocates, JT says, will go slow about then targeting kids who might look like a problem to you, but then they're labeled for life, and that's not good either, you say? Yeah, another fine line we have to walk uh, because, of course, we don't want these things to continue to happen. Um, what I found is there's, after a shooting, there's you know, a strong push for gun control, and we've seen this in the 19 years since Columbine, and really you know, what laws they passed have not prevented any of the current shootings uh, and laws that will never get passed because of the way our political climate is. And so that's why I'm starting, and I, I'm not starting, but I'm joining this movement which is rapidly gaining momentum of school safety over gun control. Because school safety is stuff we can all get behind. We all want kids to be safe. And this is stuff we can do right now in this political uh, culture. We can get you know, bills passed, laws signed that you know, say we should have armed guards, we should have metal detectors, we should protect our, our kids just as well as we do our banks, airports, and our politicians. You know, I was thinking of you and when your mom was here, uh, how you've turned adversity into something. You've gone, you know, from having a brother having no one. You're an only child now. Mm. Um, and I don't think people appreciate what's left for survivors. What is life like for you now? Well, some, you know, there's a bunch of different routes you can go when you're <laughs> left like this. You can either you know, sink into a hole, I think you, you've said this to my mom, and just be depressed the rest of your life and never do anything. Or you can use it to do something positive, which is what I'm trying to do. It's what my mom's trying to do with the Jesse Lewis Choose Love movement. You, you have to, otherwise you just, you get lost in the depression and there's nothing for you. Incredible young man. You do your brother and your mother proud. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, JT.